How do you name props properly? Why are enum props better than booleans? And what the hell is composability? And why does everyone swear by it? If you've ever asked these questions while building React components, this video is for you. I'm not preaching best practices from a textbook, just sharing real world techniques that help me clean up code, debug faster, and build components that actually scale. Let's get into the stuff no one explains properly. Let's talk about a super common mistake when naming props in React, duplicating content. You've probably seen something like this before. Props that literally repeat the component name. But just because a component is called dialogue doesn't mean every prop has to say dialogue too. Removing that duplication doesn't lose meaning. It just makes your code way easier to work with you type less and it's instantly more readable. Now here's the key insight. The state name in your parent component can still be verbose, like is dialogue open, but the prop passed to the component can be simplified to just is open. Why? Because the component name already gives gives you context. In fact, the deeper your component is, the more this matters. By the time you're a few hundred lines into a file, every bit of clarity counts. And when you're building something like a billing dialogue component, you don't need to call your state is billing dialogue open. Just call it is open. The name of the function or file already tells you what it's about. This idea, contextual naming, goes way beyond dialogues. It applies to every prop you write. For example, if you're passing a CSS variable, you don't need to write dash dash color dash blue dash two inside a prop called color variable. That's repeating information that's already obvious. Just call it blue 200. Or go even further, ditch the word variable altogether. Color equals blue 200 is cleaner, clearer, and says exactly what it needs to. The component itself can handle the rest. Okay, now let's talk about something I see all the time in real projects. Adding Boolean props for one-off situations. Let's say you have a dialogue and you want to make it not closable. Most people will just throw in a new prop called is closable. Technically, it works, but this kind of habit adds up and fast. You end up with a component that takes 20 different props. And now you're spending half your time just figuring out how all the Booleans interact. It's messy, it's fragile, and it's totally avoidable. Because in this case, you already have a prop that controls close ability on close. If on close exists, the dialogue is closable. If it's not passed in, then it's not. Simple. You don't need the extra boolean at all. So here's the takeaway. Before you add another boolean prop to a component, ask yourself, can I derive this behavior from something that's already there? This one mindset shift can save your component API from bloating and make your code much easier to reason about. Now look, Boolean props are fine, don't get me wrong, but let me show you where they fall apart fast. Imagine you've got a button component and you give it both is primary and is secondary props at the same time. It's an impossible state. You can't have a button be both primary and secondary. That makes no sense. Enum props fix that. They make impossible states literally impossible, way better. It's cleaner, less ambiguous, and much easier to use. And here's a bonus. You also get better autocomplete support in your editor. And on top of that, you can now use that prop for styling directly. Tell me that's not more satisfying than trying to conditionally toggle five different class names. Now here's a cool edge case. What if you want to use enum props, but still allow custom values, like a hex code? Let's say you've got a color prop with preset design system values, but you also want people to pass in whatever they want. Typing it as string kind of works, but you lose autocomplete for your design system values, and that sucks. So here's a little trick I found on the internet, and yes, it actually works. Why does it make sense? I honestly have no idea. But TypeScript accepts it, your editor auto-completes your design tokens, and everyone's happy. Sometimes you don't need to know why, it just works. You've probably seen libraries like Radix UI or Base UI, where components are split into smaller parts, like root, trigger, content, and so on. This is called a compound component, and it's all about composability. At first glance, it looks like a lot of boilerplate, but these libraries are intentionally low level. They give you full control over every piece instead of bloating the component with endless boolean props for every possible use case. For example, if you want to style the separator, you just add a class directly to it. No need to pass a separator class name prop from the parent. This kind of freedom is why composability matters. Usually you'd wrap these low level parts into a higher level component that your team can reuse across the project. Let me show you a cleaner example. Here's a slides component built with composition. Each slide 
Light is a real JSX element, visually clear, easy to scan, and way easier to manage. Now compare that to a version that uses a single data prop with a bunch of objects. You lose JSX, you lose readability. And if you want to pass additional props, good luck. You'll have to build support for every one of them manually. With composition, each child component can register itself in a shared collection, track its index, and respond to active state naturally without polluting your props. Now, yes, this setup isn't perfect. If the child list changes, you'll have to handle cleanup manually. That's one of the trickiest parts of React's reconciliation model. If you're curious how to solve it properly, check out how Radix uses their collection utility. It's a solid reference. And finally, if you're building compound components yourself, this little trick will clean things up nicely. Use object.assign to merge subcomponents onto a single export. Now you get a beautiful API like slides.slide without sacrificing structure or reusability. That's composability. More flexible, more powerful, and way more scalable than bloated prop-heavy components. If you watched until here, thank you. Drop a like, comment what you want next, and subscribe for more. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.